When's the last time Missouri got really, really, really lucky? Because, well, yet another example of being very unlucky on Saturday night. So let's talk about that. Plus, Brady Cook's Saturday and basketball coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hail you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball each and every weekday. And you know what? LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster, so post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash Locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And I got to say at this point in my Missouri fandom, I'm rather used to garden variety plays going against Missouri. I mean, heck, often garden variety plays, well, Missouri will get those kind of breaks too. I can think of just back to the South Carolina game, for sure Missouri got at least a couple plays where I was going, ooh, I don't know about that call. Missouri got pretty fortunate there. But when it comes to utterly bizarre plays, like not just like the Chris Rodriguez fumble that was reviewed, that was that was questionable. It was borderline, no doubt. In the stadium, frankly, I thought the ground caused it, but some other people thought differently. And I've also seen some bad spots before, though not a whole lot worse than that fourth down spot where it looked like the Wildcat was a solid full yard short of even getting back to the line of scrimmage. But my goodness, what in the world was going on with that punt play? Could you can you believe that? Because number one, it's 21 to 17. This actually kind of cracked me up. Mark Stoops gave the punter for Kentucky a lot of credit at the end of the game, and in, and in some ways he does. The guy literally took one for the team, right? I think he may have broken his tibia or something like that. Certainly they brought the card out for the young man. So give him credit for getting off the punt and essentially saving the game for Kentucky. But I'm not even sure he made the right decision there. To me, up 21-17 to 17 with two and a half minutes left, if you're Kentucky, if you're the Kentucky punter, really any punter out there, if you're in this situation – especially in a game where the opposing offense hasn't done a whole lot so far, by all means, just kick that ball through the back of the end zone. Take a safety, make it 21-19, to 19, have a free kick, hopefully, you know, kick it into the – kick it back as far as you can, obviously get the best field position outcome that you possibly can. But then you at least make Missouri have to go try something because more than likely – that guy does end up getting tackled there more often than not. If he gets tackled at the five or inside the five or something like that or fumbles, gives up a touchdown there, well, he's actually hurt his team quite a bit. Then the then the mistake is not only on the long snapper, it's actually on the punter as well. But again, hey, the guy did take one for the team. He miraculously got off a punt there about 25, 30 yards down the field. And, well, was it worth it? To suffer that injury? Well, you'd, you'd have to ask him, I suppose. But Mark Stoops certainly letting that kid know that he appreciated it. But again, not sure he made the right decision there, to be honest with you. And ironically, Jack Stonehouse, the Missouri punter, had ample time. When he dropped his snap in the first half, he had ample time to do what the Kentucky punter did, rolling to his right and, and safely kick it away. But instead, he did not. And, well, took a, <laughs> took a big shot on the sidelines, was a few yards short of actually getting that first down for Missouri. But I did have to think, once again, Missouri, you just have to say, we find it's not that we never get lucky, but my goodness, in terms of really bizarre single plays and moments, my goodness, just over and over again, Missouri consistently finds ways that I really haven't ever seen before. And while technically, yes, that guy, the punter was in the tackle box and 
I'll technically might that might be the rule. That is an absolutely stupid rule if that's the case. Because here's the thing: I understand if you're an obvious punt formation, it's fourth down. You got a punter back there. Well, okay, he deserves some protection for sure. You shouldn't just be able to dive into his leg. I completely agree with that. The problem is in that situation, the difference is, I should say, you have an opportunity when that punter is in punt formation as a rusher to take a proper angle and to not and to avoid the guy's leg. But when the punter's running backwards, and you're chasing him down, by the way. You don't know if he's going to pick up that ball cleanly. And when he does pick it up, you don't know if he's going to run with it or attempt to punt. How could you possibly assume that? I was assuming, again, I was assuming the punter was just going to kick the ball through the back of the end zone for a safety. So how can you assume anything at that point? I certainly don't blame Will Norris, the kid from Missouri who tackled him. I, I, who would have done anything different there? And literally the ball bounces a little bit to the left of the punter of the Kentucky offense. Well, if it bounces a couple yards to the right instead, it's out of the tackle box and it's all null and void. To me, as others have said, and I'll, I'll certainly agree with that, you shouldn't be getting protection on that type of play. And like I said, the list of these bizarre plays that have gone against Missouri the flea kicker, the fifth down, a million different examples here. Certainly this Kentucky penalty is among them. So it just had me thinking, well, what is the, again, we've had little garden variety things go our way plenty of times, but my goodness, what is the luckiest play in Missouri history? Really, especially in football. Let's just, let's just keep it to football. Has, is there some, I guess the Hail Mary last year against Vanderbilt, perhaps, but uh, that was pretty lucky. But that was, again, the end of the first half. The Tigers beat Vanderbilt. Okay, great. But if that's the number one example, I don't know. Surely there's something better than that. Y'all need to hit me up in the YouTube comments and at social media at Locked on Mizzou's because I got to be honest with you, off the top of my head, I'm drawing blanks. And, of course, we do have to discuss the quarterback position, and like Spencer Rattler before him, yes, Brady Cook heard some boo birds a little bit on Saturday, so we got to talk about his play coming up, but first, I do want to remind you that these days, yes, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be as close to 100% certain as you can that you have access to the best qualified candidates possible. Well, that's where LinkedIn Jobs comes in because LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free with simple tools like screening questions. They make it easy for you to focus on the candidates with the right skills and experience. Just prioritize, narrow it down exactly how it fits your business. So again, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen today. How about after this, you check out Locked on Sports today. From the biggest games to the biggest scores, the biggest stories go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts that only Locked on can provide. So it's Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get finer podcasts. And... I tell you, speaking of fine things, Brady Cook's fumble yesterday, not the finest example of athleticism in, in his young career, I hate to say it. In fact, not since the New York Giants' Daniel Jones tackled himself after about a 60-yard run have I seen a, a self-inflicted wound quite like that. But obviously, Brady Cook tried to make something happen. The play design was clearly a rollout to the right, and, well, oddly enough, Tries a little shake and bake and knocks the ball out of his own hands for a lost fumble. Now, clearly that's horrible, but here's what you didn't see. Not only do I somewhat question this play design just a little bit, the sprint out to the right, 
What was even worse, forget about the play call, I, I was really disappointed with our receivers on this play. Maybe with, I thought Luther Burden was fine on the play. He just ran a quick little five-yard hitch. Arguably, maybe when Cook was trying to buy time, he should have went with him to the right instead of the left. But I'm not going to fault his effort because, frankly, the other four guys on the field, I will fault their effort a little bit. I just thought, listen, clearly the number one option here, whatever it was, maybe it was that down the sidelines to Dominic Lovett, who had a couple guys on him on this play. Well, Lovett didn't seem to run the hardest streak route I've ever seen in my life. I hate to say it. Maybe he was a distraction on this route. Maybe he realized he was double teamed and wasn't going to get the ball. The problem is you look at everybody else in the route. Who's helping Brady Cook out on this play? This is something that's bothered me a little bit at times. What happened to the scramble drill? It just seems like Missouri is not very good at that particular aspect of the game. Also thought a receiver on the left side could have easily come open and flashed open in the middle of the field on his route if he just, again, runs a little bit harder of a route. I just didn't understand the jogging there. And then the guy on the all the way on the left side of the screen never gets back into frame after running his initial route. Clearly, he's not a part of the play, but again, your quarterback's running to his right. Maybe come back to him a little bit. Just the thought. I don't know. I was just disappointed on our, with our receivers on that particular play. But again, Luther Burden, though, I, I thought this was his best game as a receiver for Missouri so far, probably without a doubt. You know, he's had great moments as a punt returner. He had a, obviously, he's had some nice rushes, but I think particularly just breaking him down as a receiver game to game, I thought this was his best effort. Again, a very impressive scramble drill in the fourth quarter, and a contested catch at that that really helped keep the game alive. Another big catch in the fourth quarter for Burden as well. I think he's starting to settle in a little bit. So that was really good to see. Again, scramble drill. It's pretty simple for the most part. Yeah, you want to come if your quarterback's scrambling to one side, obviously you kind of want to flow with them. But hey, if you're running a long route, come back. And if you're running a short route, well, go long. And Luther Burden did the latter, and again, made just a fabulous high-pointed contestant catch. Got his foot down, and just seems like he's coming along nicely. Now, one play in particular that seemed to draw the ire of Missouri fans, certainly their frustration. I'm not a, a guy who boos Missouri players ever. I'll certainly boo the occasional bad call, but I couldn't help myself when when Barrett Bannister was wide open in the second half and the ball was overthrown by a few yards on, on a pretty a pretty medium length out pattern, I definitely just yelled out, Brady! Just sort of like I would yell out, John! Just at myself in frustration if I, I shanked a golf shot or something like that. But honestly, when you go back and look at that play, Barrett Bannister stops his route momentarily as if to settle into that zone and I think Brady Cook thought he was going to keep running for sure so that wasn't just a oh my god how did he overthrow him by five yards which is initially what I felt clearly there was a some type of miscommunication here and the point in, in saying that is not to try to place any specific game here uh, uh, try to place any specific blame here excuse me I'm just saying that this is a team game, and, and communication is very key. It can't always just be on the quarterback. Now, don't get me wrong. Brady Cook wasn't good enough today by any – or excuse me, on Saturday by any stretch of the imagination. He was not good enough, and it was definitely a regression after what I thought was his best game of the season against South Carolina. I thought the long balls that Brady threw, for instance – at least a couple to burden, one to love it. I thought they were fine decisions, just thought they were bad throws. Now, sure, you got to give guys a chance. You got to throw it in bounds for them to complete it, obviously. But a couple of those, perhaps both to burden, in fact, were just thrown too far inside and really maybe a little fortunate not to be picked off. There's a fine, a fine line on those deep shots down the sideline. Obviously, you got to throw it in bounds. You throw it out of bounds. You never give the guy a chance. At the same time, if it's too far inside, well, now that one-on-one -on -one shot, the further inside it goes, the more advantage the defense has to not only obviously knock it down, but pick it off as well. 
Of course, on the other side of the coin, Brady Cook did have a moment of really beautiful athleticism on that 20-yard touchdown run, breaks a tackle, spins out of it. That was almost Luther Burden-esque if I do, if I may be so bold, but you know, ultimately, while the Missouri defense obviously once again came through big time for the Tigers, wasn't quite enough. Well, you got to blame the offense. A lot of that on the rushing attack. Again, after Missouri had maybe its best overall rushing game against South Carolina, this was a bit of a regression, which you would expect against a really good defense like Kentucky as well. Certainly, they're they're about on par with the Tigers without question. So, even though Missouri held Chris Rodriguez on 29 carries to 112 yards, that's slightly less than four a carry. I certainly would have taken that before the game, but unfortunately Cody Schrader with just 3.1 yards per carry, and other than that 20-yard rush by Brady Cook, not a whole lot of production outside of Schrader in the rushing game either. So too bad, too bad Missouri just really, that probably was ultimately the difference in the game. Like I said, you can forget about, obviously, the the little breaks that Kentucky had added up big time. But still, you look at that rushing attack, they were just a little bit better than the Tigers. And coming up, while the exhibition game for the Missouri basketball team was a lot about experimentation tonight against Southern Indiana, I'd like to see a little bit more cohesion So let's talk about that. But first, over at betonline.net, yes, ladies and gentlemen, thankfully, (laughs) the the Wildcats did not get a garbage touchdown there at the very end of the game as Missouri was trying very desperately to score a touchdown from some 80-plus yards out there. I was holding my breath, as you know, but yes, we went under once again. The streak is alive, and over at betonline.net, the Tigers currently 21-point underdogs at Tennessee this week, a 57-point total as we speak. We'll have more on that as the week progresses. I will say I would have thought that line would have been a little higher, but clearly they're putting some respect on that Missouri defense's name. But you know what? Regardless of which way we go on those, you got to go to betonline.net for all your wagering needs, whether it's college football, basketball, the pros, Ah, yes, MLB Futures. Even though the World Series is over, baseball never sleeps. So check it all out at Bet Online, where the game starts. Well, I think like most people who showed up at Mizzou Arena this past, oh, when was that exhibition game? Is that Thursday? I think that's when it was. I think we were all stunned when Isaiah Mosley was not in the starting lineup, right? But turns out, Dennis Gates told us openly, hey, I was experimenting, just trying to get these guys off their game, just take five guys at random, just make sure everybody's ready to go, keep them a little off kilter. So apparently that was his goal there, and just to try some different combinations, maybe some different defensive coverages, all kinds of different stuff. But frankly, I hope tonight in a a real game against Southern Indiana, certainly a game that Missouri should win easily considering the level of of very, very low Division One competition going to be happening here this evening in Columbia. Should be an easy victory, but I'd like to see what this lineup is really going to look like. Or give me an idea, anyway, because I didn't I didn't get any of that from the exhibition game. Got to assume Mosley and Kobe Brown and Nick Honor are going to start, but the other two guys are, are pretty, open the, pretty up in the air, if you ask me. Perhaps one of... DeAndre Golston and Demoy Hodge on the wing. Uh, Perhaps Noah Carter will start along with Kobe Brown. Those would be my first guesses, but again, they're all just guesses at this point. Also very curious to see who the real first couple guys off the bench are. Who is the number one guard? Who's the number one big guy off the bench, quote unquote? The number one forward, if you will. Does Ronnie DeGray, is he actually a part of this team moving forward? So I think it's going to be interesting to watch tonight because while it was fun to see all the guys individually the last time out in the exhibition game, and really the biggest revelation once again was, wow, I did not know Isaiah Mosley was this good of a playmaker. That really stood out, not only to me, I think to anybody who watched that game. Perhaps some of you are big Rockbridge fans or bigger high school fans than I am. Maybe you knew what a good playmaker he was, but I knew he was a really good scorer. I had seen that. 
But man, the passing ability, that's really encouraging to me. And thanks once again for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked On Sports Today with the big stories, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on Odyssey, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So until next time, I'm John Miller. And on Tuesday, we'll certainly talk about this Southern Indiana basketball game right here on Locked On Mizzou.